Did you feel it? A 4.2 quake hit the Sacramento Delta this morning. Yes, 4.2. I know we were saying 4.1 just an hour ago. This thing keeps changing, and that's part of what we're exploring here today. The epicenter was near Isleton, about 20 miles northeast of Antioch. Many people in the Bay Area felt the shaking, mostly in the East Bay. But the bigger question now is, did you get the alert? Many Bay Area residents got a loud notification when it happened. Not only that, the alert listed the quake at 5.7 initially. See that? See the blue one? 5.7. Why? Joining us live now to talk about the alert system and how well it worked today, Dr. Angie Lux with the Earthquake Early Warning Project at the Berkeley Seismology Lab. Dr. Lux, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Okay, before we get into the numbers, we'll be using different terms, so I just want to make sure people understand. What's the Shake Alert and what's the MyShake app and what is the Berkeley Seismology Lab's relationship to them? That's a great question. So the Shake Alert system is the West Coast Earthquake Early Warning System. That is uh, operated by the United States Geological Survey. That system creates alerts. So we detect the earthquake. We say this an earthquake has happened. This is the estimated location and the magnitude of the event. Now, the US, sorry, the Shake Alert system has a number of partners, and these partners can use the alerts that we create, the messages, and use those to then do whatever they want, whether that's alert the public or for automated systems. In this case, MyShake is one of the partners. MyShake then delivers the app, sorry, delivers the warnings to the people via a cell phone app. Uh, another user is the WIA system. So the WIA can take the shake alert messages and then send out warnings to people on their cell phones using those WIA messages that we've seen. But those are the louder sounds uh, that can be a little bit jarring. Got you may have also received an alert on an Android app. Okay. So the shake alert, okay, gets, sends the messages out, the partners, they send it out however they like, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. the problem is, I think that confused a lot of people, is that the MyShake app alert came in as a 5.7 initially. Was that based on the initial sensors reading of the quake? And, you know, I know there are usually re adjustments of, you know, 0.1 or 0.2, but to go from a 5.7 to a 4.1 and then just in the last hour back to a 4.2, what is going on? So there's the, again, you're, there's a number of different systems that are happening here. So just to reiterate, MyShake is taking the information that was created by ShakeAlert. So ShakeAlert was the one that created the magnitude estimate of 5.7. MyShake simply picked up that estimate and passed it along to the public. Again, so- but How did uh, they get to the 5.7? Why was it so grossly is, overestimated? Great question. ShakeAlert is operating very, very quickly. ShakeAlert is not prediction. It's, so earthquake early warning is not prediction. It's saying an earthquake has happened, and we're going to let you know that the shaking is about to reach you. So everything is happening very, very quickly. This means we could use maybe half a second or one second of data from a station. And if that station happens to have a not great estimate, that can impact the system. In this particular instance, we saw that the station closest to the epicenter overestimated the magnitude pretty significantly. And when that was thrown into the mix, it made the overall magnitude estimate created by the system higher than we would have expected for that given earthquake. Yeah, have you ever seen such an overestimation before, like so large? You this have? is a pretty significant one. Yeah. So we're just gonna, we're going to definitely be going to dive into this one. Some things with this one that we actually did overall a great job. The location estimate was really spot on. That's great. The rest of the system worked exactly as it should have done. Now with this earthquake, there was shaking. People did feel shaking. Again, we did overestimate the magnitude, mm -hmm. but the point of our system is to warn those people closest to the epicenter that they may feel shaking. And so in this particular instance, we did send out an alert. There was shaking. People did feel the shaking. Um, also, I want to, you know, yes, many people got the alert and go, why did I get this, right? Um, like some didn't even feel it. So explain mm -hmm. the thresholds that different agencies use, because I understand some set it at a 5.0, others set it at a 4.0. So, and, and we even have like a little graph, I think that was tweeted out showing the different agencies, institutions, mm -hmm. and the different magnitudes. Um, not that one, but a different one that has all the 4.5, 4.0. But, you know, why why can't they be uniform? It's so confusing. A great question. We have different users that have different preferences. So in the case of the WIA alerts, those are really designed for imminent life safety. And that this is the government alert being sent out, just like an Amber alert that's sent out via WIA as well. So for the WIA alerts, they have a higher threshold. So they have a higher magnitude threshold of magnitude five. So they only want to send out an alert when the estimated magnitude is five or above. For MyShake, those are more of an opt-in thing because people download the app. 
for that particular one, there's a magnitude threshold of 4.5. In addition, we only we aim to alert people who are going to feel at least weak shaking. Now, given that aim and the variation with geology and just where people are living and the building that they're in, some people may or may not feel shaking with those alerts. Um, again, we can't make everybody happy, so we're trying to uh, send out alerts to as many people who may feel they're shaking. Yeah, the and you want to let the people know if they may be impacted in some way, right? Especially if they may right. be in danger, like experiencing the quake and the shaking at a level in which things may be falling on them. Um, which leads me to wonder if individuals can actually choose the threshold at which they want to get an alert from whatever app they're using, right? Because let's say some people are fine getting the app this morning at 9 something with the audio, the alert, the beeping. But let's say if it were 3 a.m., some people may not think that's worth waking up for. That's a great point. And we have different people, as you say, who want different uh, different uh, thresholds. That's some you can, you know, we're, we're welcome, we welcome feedback. And um, at the moment, my shake doesn't allow um, you to set those thresholds, but that could be something we could add in the future, perhaps, if that's something that people are interested in. See, with each quake, it's iteration and reiteration, and, and, and that's kind of how we view those, you know, minor quakes in the Bay Area, right? We get them a lot, and it's a chance for you to test the system and perfect the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to ask you, that alert came with uh, the instruction to drop cover and hold on. What does that really mean these days? Because I don't really see people actually just dropping um, or holding on to something. Like, what, what should we do when we get this? Ideally, you should drop cover and hold on. So as soon as you get that alert, you should take action. The thing is with earthquake early warning, if you are closest to that epicenter, you may get that warning only a couple of seconds before you feel strong shaking. So the idea is that we train people to receive the alert, then take immediate action. Again, you might be a little further away, perhaps you're not gonna feel strong shaking, but you don't know where you are relative to the earthquake. You don't know how strong that shaking is gonna be, but we can tell you, hey, an earthquake has started you may feel shaking. Right, right, okay. And and your warning, the, the time lapse is what, one, a second to like maybe 10 seconds, depending on how far away you are? Depending on how close you are, if you're right on top of the epicenter, you may not get warning. I, that's one of the limitations of earthquake early warning. Yeah. We have to detect the earthquake before we can tell you that an earthquake has happened. Um, but it does work very, very quickly, and you may get up to tens of seconds of warning for moderate shaking, depending on where you are, how yeah, big the earthquake is. That can is, make a difference. Real quickly, to, really tomorrow is the great shakeout, right? So are we going to get another alert tomorrow as an actual <laughs> drill, not an er actual quake? I know that caused some confusion today. Today was not a test. Tomorrow is the test. So I know that was a lot of confusion on social media, but tomorrow yeah. we are still planning to have the great shakeout test. Okay. All right. We've been warned. Thank you so much, Dr. Lux. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So we know how to prepare for an earthquake, but are you ready? Get a kit, make a plan, be informed. If you need help, check out abc7news.com slash prepare NorCal.